Okay, the first shortcut I'm gonna show you here, I'm so excited about, and it's called an add edit shortcut. It comes default as command K. So if you want to change it to something else, you can go Premiere Pro, go to keyboard shortcuts and map it to whatever you would like. But the add edit keyframe, keyboard shortcut, sorry, uh, adds an edit, does exactly what you'd think it would do. Where your playhead is, when you use that keyboard shortcut, it adds an edit. This prevents you from needing to go see to use your razor tool and actually clicking where you want the edit to be. You can map that uh, to whatever you'd like. I have it mapped to S and S is right below Q and W because Q and W are two other of my most used refining uh, shortcuts. And what Q and W does is ripple edit. So what a ripple edit is, if we hit W here, it'll ripple this edit to this side and move everything with it. So that edit just moved over and it brought all the clips beside it with it. And if you use the Q ripple edit, it'll ripple the previous edit to the playhead and move everything over and yet remove that first section of the clip. So those are the shortcuts for ripple editing, but you can also ripple edit using your mouse and you can do that by pressing B and that allows you to select these edits manually with your mouse and drag them over like that. So you can extend length to a clip. That's what I'm most frequently using it for, uh, extending length to a clip and then moving everything over with it. And then you can also use a roll edit tool and I'm gonna show you how that roll edit is actually really powerful when you're trying to time things up with music. So let's actually drop a music track down in here because this is where ripple editing uh, needs an extra level of thought. And uh, what I mean by that is you need to be aware of which layers you're ripple editing on. So let's say we use our uh, add edit shortcut here. It'll drop and add edit all the way down your layers there that are toggled on. This is how you toggle a layer on and off. So if that layer isn't toggled on, it won't add that edit. But uh, let's say we have it toggled on and we don't want to add that edit. Uh, we can lock the music track. This is what I'm most frequently doing when I'm doing ripple style edits and I'm moving things around and I'm using keyboard shortcuts and I don't want it to modify my song. So let's look at ripple editing with a song. So let's go play. So what I just did there is press spacebar on the beat of the music. This is how I edit my, uh, this is how I sync my edits to the beat of the music is I use my ripple edits. So I hit stop there with the play bar and then I'm gonna hit W to ripple edit this edit to where that beat was. Another way that you can make sure that you're right on the beat is you can use your arrows. And you can kind of find right where the climax of that particular sound that you want to have the edit change on. You can use your arrows to kind of toggle through that. So that way you can make for sure you're right on that beat. But normally I would actually just hit the ripple edit key right then and just let the, the timeline keep playing. So let's play again. So that's time to the beat there. So just added another ripple edit there. Added another ripple edit. I don't like that clip, so I'm actually gonna delete it out by another keyboard shortcut I have set up. So that one's called uh, Ripple Delete, and I have that mapped to my E uh, keyboard shortcut. So when I hit E, it just ripple deletes that entire clip right out. Another uh, method of ripple editing is if you have a space, you can actually just select that space and hit delete and that will move all those clips over. That's kind of a handy little trick. So uh, <laughs> again, another trick is that you can hit A and that will toggle select all to the right of where you click. So again, this is why it's really handy to lock tracks because if we didn't have that track locked, it would actually move the audio track with us. And I, I use this uh, A keyboard shortcut a ton. Again, this is one that I didn't learn when I started, but it would have saved me so much time because I spent like my first years of editing, selecting everything, and then I'd like mess up and then try select it again. Uh, but if you just press A, oh, that's not A. If you just press A, it allows you to select everything to the right. How beautiful is that? If you press Shift A, it let, lets you select everything to the left, but I rarely ever use that one. So right there, you just saw me out of instinct select all the clips like that, but all I gotta do is press A, and it'll allow me to move all of them. What I use this for most frequently is pressing A, moving stuff over, making room for another clip that I wanna bring in, and then using the ripple delete, I just delete those sections right out like that. Okay, so let's actually take this to another advanced level and let me show you what it looks like when you're editing with multiple layers on a timeline here. So this is a project that I've been editing. It's a review uh, that I did on some lights that I've been testing. Um, 
So down here, this is the interview track. This is where I'm talking and it's got the video and the audio. And then this is the song that I edited to. And then up here, these are all my B-roll layers. And I've got this blank layer here because I'm gonna add an adjustment layer later for color grading. So let's not uh, really worry about this video layer too right now. But look here, I've got these three layers locked. So that way when I'm cutting ripple editing, on these upper layers, it won't modify what's down here because I don't want to change this. So if I don't have these locked and I just ripple edit to my heart's content, it messes everything up. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that ripple edits only happen on tracks that are toggled. So if I don't have the track toggled, the ripple edit won't work. And so sometimes you forget that you don't have them toggled and it behaves you weird and you just go, oh, the track wasn't toggled. That's why it behaved weird. So we're going to lock these. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to start timing the edit to the music using ripple edits uh, with these locked. Added in an edit there and then I hit space and then space again so it catches up. Hit space bar, W to ripple edit. Added in an edit there. So this point there really hasn't been a powerful portable setup that really has met my needs. And I'm so as you can see, ripple editing just allows me to make some of these modifications to the timing of the edit without really needing to do the whole, you know, expand out, drag select everything, move it over each time that I make some of these edits. And I really do find the B shortcut for adding uh, space to the beginning of a clip and having everything ripple over be really helpful. Then another thing that I'm doing frequently is using A, moving everything over and then testing a different clip in that section, trying it out. I like it there, dropping this stuff back down and then deleting out the gaps. Okay, so that's the basics of ripple editing and it massively improved my editing workflow. For me, as an editor, I wanna have my experience with my editing software be as seamless as possible from what I think to what the software is actually doing so that way I can spend more time refining the story and less time thinking about, oh, like I gotta click and drag and move things. So this really does help you create more story-driven edits. If you focus on getting fast, and if you focus on knowing how the software works and how to ultimately save time, it's really just gonna improve the amount of time you can spend finessing your story. When I first started editing in Premiere, I was so overwhelmed by the quantity of shortcuts that were possible. And I've found over the years of editing that I'm frequently using half a dozen to a dozen shortcuts all the time. And these ones are the ones that I showed you today and in previous videos. So if you wanna check out what those are, I I've put together a compilation of some of those shortcuts. Now it's not all encompassing, but if you haven't learned shortcuts and if you haven't been utilizing them, uh, just learning these ones to start can really maximize your workflows and I'm really psyched about it. If you wanna learn how to tell better stories, that's what I'm actually most passionate about and I've been developing a course on adventure filmmaking, adventure documentary filmmaking. So if you wanna learn how to become a better adventure filmmaker, head over to leftcoast.co slash learn and uh, hop on the email list there. So that way we can start having a conversation. I'll send you the new stuff that I'm putting out and I'd love to hear back from you some of the questions on storytelling that you have because I'm developing a course on how to make adventure documentaries, how to make adventure films. I'm really excited about this and really looking forward to the new year and everything that's in store. This project that I've been working on now for a couple months is the new highlighting and highlighting and slacklining web series that I've been working on. That's gonna be coming out in the spring. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel, subscribe to the newsletter so that way you can know when stuff's coming out and where to find it. And you can also just get direct access to my inbox because I read every single email I get. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. So drop in the comments. If you've got another fast editing tip, I love hearing other people's tips and tricks. And uh, that's all for this video. I really hope you learned something. I really hope you became a Premiere Pro ninja. And uh, Remember, life's better when you make stuff.